Hi, witches. How are you? Chai and chat. I'm sorry it's been so long. We've been doing a lot of remodeling, restuff because it's been awesome and I needed to reconnoiter. But today on our episode, we're going to talk about our altars, okay? And I have Shannon here, my VA. She's going to allow me to uh, make an episode out of creating her altar in her space. So the first thing you need to know when you're setting up your altar is, Shannon, what is the purpose of your altar? So come on over here so everybody can see you too. I mostly just wanted a place that I could concentrate and meditate and focus on my spiritual path that I discovered. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, let's look at all of the stuff that you already have. Let's go through them and explain what they are. And then we'll go through the placement as after we introduce them. So what's the first thing you want to put on your altar? I would say my God and Goddess statues. That's perfect. So we have now, if you don't have statues like this, you can use a stone or something else in order to replace them just simply by having something that honors them. Now, if, depending on what feels right for you, again, altars are very personal. So usually in witchcraft, the female always goes on the right, the left. Oops, so. That feels wrong. Female goes on the right, male goes on the left. That's how it is. Again, everybody's different. If it doesn't feel right to you in this position, move it, okay? It's all personal, one-on-one. -on -one. Does this feel comfortable yes. for you? Yes. Okay, the other way just felt wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, so usually the feminine is always on the left side and the male is always on the right side. But again, it's all up to you what you want to do, what you want to see on your altar. So the, we have the representation. So we're leaving that middle open so that we can also do the directions north, south, east, west. Yes. Now, depending on how big your altar is, is going to depend on what you can put on your altar. Some people like really cluttered altars. Some people don't. They like it very sparse. So it's very individualistic in what you want to do. Okay. So for earth, usually it's north. So do you know which way is facing north here by any chance? I do not. Okay. So if you don't know which way is facing north, most handy dandy phones now have compasses. All you have to do is bring it up and it shows me that north is right there. So it's pointing right at the God statue. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll move it over just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty close. North. And then east, south, west. Just in case you guys didn't learn this in school. <laughs> Never eat shredded wheat. <laughs> north, east, south, west. Okay? You always go clockwise. If you're going counterclockwise, you're cleaning off your altar. Counterclockwise means you're undoing things. Clockwise means you are doing things. So don't go counterclockwise clockwise when you set it up, counterclockwise when you set it down if you want to do it that way. Again, if it feels right to you. So in the north, we need anything that has to do with, and this is where we'll put, we'll have a graphic right here probably, or somewhere in this area, we'll have a graphic. You never know. You never know. Um, so for earth, we're looking for crystals, plants, wood, a pentacle, bones, or coins. I have those stones there. So can I touch yes, them? Yes. Okay. First thing, first lesson of any altar is before you touch anybody's magical tools, you ask for permission. Okay. I wouldn't go into your house and just open up your refrigerator and start eating your food. You don't come into my house and touch my altar. Okay. So that's the way it goes. It's very rude to touch a person's altar without asking permission or any magical tool. I don't care if it's an athame, a stone, a necklace. Some people always reach for my necklace because it's a key. And I always take it and I go, it's a key. <laughs> I don't want you touching it. If I wanted you touching it, I'd have offered it to you. But there are some people who will ask, can I touch your key? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So can I touch your yes. stones? Yes. All right. So the selenite, I'm going to leave that there on the window. Yeah. 
But again, it depends on how you want to do it. Because this makes a beautiful flower. <laughs> So there's your earth. Wonderful. Okay. You could also use your wooden box. Yeah. Because because it's made out of wood. Yes. So for example, if these are done charging mm -hmm. and you just want them to be safe for use, you could actually use this That's a brilliant idea. to keep these in. When I bought it, I didn't know what I would use the box for. I just knew I wanted it. <laughs> so this could be an alter charging box yeah. where you put it in there and it's charged or you put it in there for charging. Beautiful. Depending on how you want to do it. So we put that up in the north. Now east. North goes with earth. Mm -hmm. So the color is green. Here's the thing. If you have health issues, <laughs> specifically cancer, Okay, don't be concentrating on green too much. Green is an abundant color, color and it causes growth. Growth, okay? So if you're doing it, you instead of focusing on the color green, you could focus on trees, bushes, anything that comes from the earth, salt, stones. So for example, you can imagine that your, your earth guardian looks like a rock salt lamp that guards you while you're doing your rituals. Yeah. Okay. So that's the earth. And then next is east. East corresponds with the element of air. Air has to do with intelligence. It has to do with knowledge. It has to do with inspirations. So I know what I usually put on, but I've got this cool graphic that you're still seeing. So with the... Air, we're going to use incense, feathers, bell, a staff, broom, or a pen. So if you don't have this kind of stuff in your house, okay? So I told you, don't go altar yeah. shopping because we wanted to use what we have around. So a pad of paper and a pen. You can write out your thoughts. You can use it as inspiration. You can write out your journal. Um, you could go out and go for a small walk around your neighborhood and see if you can find a feather. Okay. Now, when you do find feathers, please be careful when you bring them home. Put um, Dawn on them and wash them really good and let them air dry because feathers do have what are called mites. And they're teeny tiny microscopic little spiders and they will take over your home. So make sure that your feather is perfect. I happen to have So make sure that your feathers are clean. Um, so you can use this in your east. So we know that's north. So never eat shredded wheat. Okay, so east. And with this beautiful octagon table, it sets up those <laughs> perfectly. Like they're actually like pointing at them almost. Yeah. We so, actually found that one at Goodwill of all places. Oh, nice. For like... Three bucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Secondhand store, reduce, reuse, recycle, repurpose. Which is, we repurpose. We're stewards of the earth. If we don't have to buy new, we try really hard not to. And I did use some obliterate. And there you go. <laughs> and use obliterate on it because it cleans it all out. So another thing that you could put here is like an incense burner yeah, of I some kind. Right there. Oh, look at that. So we could even take these and set them here on the East Altar as well. Yes. So that's the east. Okay. So now is south. South is the element of fire, passions, sometimes anger, because you know, it's fire. So in this, we can put the can candle, an athame, snakeskin, a wand, cauldron, or pyramids. I personally would not put a cauldron in fire and south. Yeah. I would put a cauldron in west. Because in the tradition I learn, West is the cauldron of life. That's where all life comes and goes. Yes. So I would more likely put a cauldron in the West. But again, if it feels right to you, that's what you put on your altar. So would you like to put your like candle holder yeah. and a candle in the West? Yes, I could. Is there a certain color I should use? Well, if, uh, well, if it's the element of fire, the color is red. So you can do a red. Um, Red candle. Um, here's a 
Can I play with yeah, your yeah, cannonball? Yeah. Yes. Can I help? Okay. Here's a little bit of a trick to use when it comes to these little chime candles. These things are never <laughs> stable and they can fall out. Okay. Here's the thing. You have cats, pets, kids. Somebody's going to knock into shit, you know, and or stuff. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's stable. So a lot of people will light it and then drip candle wax into it. Don't do that. It makes a mess. You might as well just go ahead and just, you know, stick it on your stove and then stick it in the candle holder because it'll work better. Candle lighter. And sometimes it doesn't work for a shot. There we go. Beautiful. So now it's more stable. Notice it's not moving. Yes. It's not flying around. So um, always make sure that your candles are stable. Before you go to light a candle on any altar, okay, I'm going to do my major disclaimer. You don't just look around it. You look up, okay? If you have a candle burning this close to your blinds and heat rise, you're going to start a fire. Please do not be the witch on TV whose house burnt down because they forgot to look up and started their house on fire. So be aware with candles, okay? So fire south goes in this part. Now, because this is so close to the edge, I would probably put it back more here where it's comfortable. Yeah. So what's really nice is with this little table, you can leave this little part open mm -hmm. and then you can have your elements around and still have this part for when you have an intent. Yes. Okay. So we'll move this down just a little. Mm -hmm. um, other things that I would put on here, like for example, I would put my divination tools in the south because I'm a Leo. If you're an earth sign, a Virgo, for example, you'd put it here. Gemini, it would go on the east side. So depending on where you are and what your passions are. Now, you can look up on on um, Google is your best friend. And all you have to do is Google the metaphysical properties of, insert word here, and it will tell you all you need to know. And it'll even give you the kind of the quarters is what we call it, the quarters or the elements that would go into your altar. Okay. So then we have the east, the west, excuse me, west. West is the final one, at least when we go counterclockwise, okay? So there you put a cup, a bowl, a cauldron, so you have west covered. Yes. So you can put this. Also, think of west. West is water, so and it's the color blue. So you can put blue things down, seashells, sand, anything that has to do with water okay so your cauldron okay <laughs> so there's your altar now when it comes to your south you can put whatever you yeah. want that feels you know um that goes I with it because like i said this one you know pyramids athme you don't have one yet snake skin I can see snakeskin, but I can also put other transformative things down there. Like, for example, a butterfly cocoon that has been the butterflies come out of. Okay. Transformative fire. Fire is very transformative. So is air. So is earth. So is water. But generally they see the south and fire as being transformative because we are burned and we come back from the ashes. Phoenixes. So when you're doing an intent, no, that's fine. So look at that. Okay, first, first lesson of athame handling is when you hold, anytime you're holding an athame and you give it to someone, you give it to them like this. Yeah. That was okay. So when you give an athame or any knife, I don't care where you are. I don't care if you're out in the middle of the woods. When you hand a knife to someone, you don't go like this. No. You take a hold of the handle and you hand it like this. That includes an athame. Now, when you receive an athame, they will hand, they will give it to you like this first. And then when they give it to you, they will hand it to you like this. 
So you can put the athame down here. Pyramid. This one looks like it's looks like it's moonstone, maybe. Maybe not. Shiny. <laughs> it's shiny and glittery and pretty. Yes. So there's your altar setup. Now, in the middle here, you can use for like your intent. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're trying to use uh one of the, you know, um show me the money gazing potions. Yes. Okay, you would shake it up really hard, put it here, and then focus on that intent. Yeah. Because when you focus on that intent, all of this is adding power as it's pulsing it out through yeah. the universe. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so now this is how you set the altar. Now, if you're going to use your altar in a ritual, there's a different way to do it. Okay, you can have single tables for every element. Okay. And it would be in a circle around you. So you would have to walk to each altar. Yeah. Now, for here at home, you could still use this, but you would need to have candle holders for each element. Yeah. Now, you can even use a bowl from your kitchen. Light the bottom of the candle, stick it in the middle of the bowl. Okay? Make sure it's fire safe. For example, if I'm going to burn something in this... I'm going to put a pot holder or something underneath it because this is metal. It's going to get hot and it can start a fire. You have to be fire conscious. The element of fire is a very wonderful element, but she's a greedy bitch too. <laughs> and she will eat everything she can get her hands on. So you got to be careful with fire. Okay. So be aware, like for example, this this would be a little bit better and you wouldn't have to worry so much about a burn because it has this, the stilts on it, but I would still put something yeah. like a pot holder or a fire safe cover underneath it just in case this bottom becomes so hot, it starts radiating heat onto your altar cloth, cloth flammable. So just be aware of safety overall. Same goes for incense, same goes for all of that stuff. So what you would do if you were using it in ritual is you'd have a candle of each color. Mm -hmm. So the colors of green, mm -hmm. yellow, yellow, red, red, blue. Very good. The god is gold and the goddess is silver. Sun, moon. So if you're going to have candles up for them, mm -hmm. you want to have gold and silver. Yes. Sometimes you can't get gold and silver. Get yellow and gray. Okay, you don't have to be perfect. Use what you have. Magic is not all about, oh, it's a Wednesday and I have to wait for the new moon and Mercury is a moon. No, <laughs> I have magical needs right now. I'm going to do magic right now and I'm going to use what's at hand. So however you want to do that, you can do that. You can use bowls. Like, for example, she can even use this as a candle holder. By gluing it in the bottom the way that I showed you earlier with the fire altar area. So your intent would go in the middle. Now, if you were doing your ritual, you would you would decide which quarter or which element you're going to start with. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, a lot of people start in the east because east is for beginnings. Yeah. It's for rebirths. So a lot of people start in the east. I learned the Celtic tradition, and the Celtic tradition starts in the West with the cauldron of life. Some people, for example, the Gardenarians, they use Earth or North as their starting point. So depending on what you prefer, some people started depending on what their ritual is for. If you're doing it for more intuition, you're going to start in the West. If you're doing it for more intelligence, knowledge, and, and you know, bringing in that kind of information, you're going to start on the East. North, more grounding. South, more passion. So really think about that and do some research into each individual element. Okay? So for me, and I'll show you the way I would do it, I would start in the west, and I would call the quarter and light the candle. And then I would turn to the north. Now, when you're doing a ritual in your home, you don't have to be perfect, but remember to always go in the same way. So 
the same direction. So we're going to go clockwise. So I'm going to stand in front of your altar and kind of show you how I would do it, okay? So I would call to the elements of the, east, the west to come and to protect me throughout my rite and ritual. Then I would turn to the north and call them to guard and protect my rite and ritual. East, again, same thing. South, same thing. Now... If for some reason you forget and you have to go back to east for something, you do not know, you do not turn this way. You're going counterclockwise. You're just undoing everything you've done. You want to go clockwise. Even if you have to turn around a couple of times to get where you're going, okay? So if I needed to go east, I would still turn this way to get to the east. Because I do not want to do this. That's when you're done. When you're done, you're going to go backwards. So if I start at the west and I call them in, I'm going to start at the west and I'm going to release them. Thank you for being here. Stay if you will. Go if you must. Hail and farewell. But now instead of going towards the north, I'm going to go towards the south. I'm going backwards. Then east. Then north. Once you're done, you can take care of your altar after that. Some people light each individual candle when they call the element in or the guardians of that element in. Some people snuff them out as they release them. It's all up to you. Again, it's personal preference. Take what you like, leave what you don't. Nothing I am saying here is written in stone. No one, there might be someone who practices similar to me, but there is no one who practices identical to me because it's individualistic. So it's individual for me, individual for you, individual for, you know, for example, Shannon here. Okay. So now do you have any questions? Uh, one, actually. Yes. When I'm putting out the candle, mm -hmm. is it... Ill advised to blow out the candle. Should I use a snuffer? I've heard different things. Yeah, that's a, that's a real contentious. It's one of those hot button issues. Um, myself personally, I don't blow because it's kind of rude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, bye, see you later. You wouldn't do that to a friend, right? So why would you do that to a guardian of an element that you have invited into your home, right. into your ritual space? So for me, a snuffer is way more polite. Mm -hmm. Also, snuffers give you a lot more control over the fire as blowing does not. Blowing, for example, you blow hard enough, you can splatter wax all over yeah. everything. That's the last thing you want, because let me tell you, wax is hard to get out of anything and everything. Okay. I've had spilled wax on my altar. It's nasty. It's hard to get out. I had to throw away one of my favorite altar cloths because it was not savable because of the wax. Mm -hmm. So the snuffers actually do a better job and it's more respectful. For example, you sure as hell don't see Catholic priests walking by their candles going <laughs> and putting them out. Okay. They walk around with snuffers and they're very gentle. They're very respectful. And they're showing that it is part of the worship. Again, it's up to you. Some people, I know some witches who are real big into the whole. I myself personally, I am a fire sign. Fire hurts and it burns. And I'm not going to purposely put it on my body. That's just me. People have their own thing. If you like that, more power to you. <laughs> so you can even use this feather. You can pick up anything off of your altar that you need in order to give yourself that incense so that you can cleanse your space if need be. So for example, let's pretend Shannon, okay, that you don't have this box. Yes. So she yes. has nothing to represent earth. We're pretending now, right? So Shannon, would you go get me a, the salt shaker you yes. have in your kitchen? Yes. So if you can't find something to work in the element that you're working in in that moment, find something that is almost like equal or a great substitution. So for example, from the earth, 
You can pull out the herbs from your, from your herb cabinet in your kitchen. You can pull out fruit, vegetables. Those are all from the earth. You can put those. Now, if you're going to put real food on your altar, please be aware of bugs. Okay. So you don't want to be putting out fruit in the middle of the summer when we're going to have a big ant problem. Okay. So be aware of what you use. So like, for example, this now, I will tell you this, do not, if you're going to put, put salt in copper, okay, remove it as soon as possible because the salt will eat the copper. It's a chemical reaction. Science, it's fun, right? It's a lot like magic. In fact, science and magic are pretty damn near the same thing with different vocabulary words. So if you're going to use this, you're going to be really careful. However, she could even use this to put it inside her cauldron. And use that to represent earth. She could take a bowl out of her kitchen, just a little small bowl, exactly, or something like this, and put the salt in it and then use it. Another thing for salt. Now, this is something you can do inside. You cannot do this outside. You will kill everything it touches. Okay. But if you want to make a circle of protection, you can use salt and sprinkle it around. The reason I say that inside of a house is because you can vacuum it up. You take salt like this and you pour a line outside in the grass, you're going to kill the grass. The every you, You'll see the line in the grass because that line will die. So instead of using salt, okay, you can use eggshells. Yet another thing you can put on for the north is eggshells because chicken are from the earth. So just really depending on what you want to use. So we could use this, fill it up. This is plastic. You don't have to worry about a chemical reaction. Ooh, wrong way. That way. <laughs> Whoa, that way. <laughs> so I know that I just touched on the elements and I can hear questions coming. Okay. What is this? What, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by this? Ah, uh, this is basically also a commercial <laughs> for my witchcraft one-on-one -on -one class that will be starting in October. I'm going to be starting it around Halloween. I'm not sure when yet. I'm looking at the dates and times and getting everything set up next week with my wonderful VA who's helping me out. Um, we'll be going over that. One of the first things that we learn in that class is the elements and you will be going in depth with the elements up to and including making a graph and figuring out what personalities and traits that you hold and which elements they relate to. So it's a lot of fun. So if you want your altar like this, you can do it like that. If you're going to do a really big ritual, you're going to probably want your altar separated and on each individual table, but that's a whole nother class because huge rituals are totally different than in home. So it's a totally different mindset and how you do it. So at this point, you can add whatever you want throughout here. And the middle part will be for the thing. Now, FYI, when you're calling the quarters, when you're done calling the quarters, that's when you will call in your God and your goddess or your guiding spirits, your ancestors. At that point, that's when you will light your candles for your God and goddess. Um, in Witchcraft when and when you do not do your first ritual until we do a ritual together. And that will happen usually around November-ish. Because October is introduction and so on and so forth. And the first one will have lecture and then we will actually have a full moon ritual. So are there any other questions that you have about your altar, honey, that I haven't asked, uh, answered? One. Yes. Um, what if you don't know who your I hate to say patron deity is if you I don't, don't have just one. Right, right. If you don't if you don't have a specific deity in which you are working with, you can just call in the goddess. So for example, you told me yourself, and I hope this is okay to share, um, that you have been very pulled to the triple goddess. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is call to the triple goddess and the triple god. Yeah. Okay. And then whichever ones choose to be with you are the ones that are gonna show up. And you, with the triple goddess like that, I would also look into Hecate. Yeah. Hecate. Um, so, but yeah, um, you don't have to have specific deities. You can just say God and goddess. There are Christian witches or Catholic witches even that will say Mary and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, Mary Magdalene, which was Jesus's wife. 
and Jesus or Jesus and or Mary and Joseph as the divine parenting of Jesus. So it really just depends on what you, for me, mine are um, Sekhmet and Ptah. Um, my husband, uh, his is Buddha. So it really just depends on what your preference is and what okay. you're looking for in that moment. Wonderful. Well, okay. Thank you for sharing. You're very welcome. Thank you for letting me use your altar as a uh, display for how to set up your altar. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact me through sarahwitchery.com. Um, there's an email link um, on my website. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you soon. Bye, witches.